So the title of the film Gattaca is based on the first letters of the four bases of DNA. G-A-T-C. Maybe I could have a new channel with science fiction movie trivia. Hey everyone, it's Vanessa and this week I wanted to talk about the video that came out last week called Mutant Menu. If you haven't seen it, please click here, go and watch. This will make a lot more sense after you've seen it. I'm super excited to finally have released Mutant Menu because I've been working on it kind of in the background like a little mouse for about a year now and I was kind of nervous to release it as well because it's pretty different to anything that I've done before and it's long it goes for 37 minutes and you guys had so many lovely things to say about both the documentary and the subject matter so I wanted to take this opportunity to do a Q&A or a comment response video which I also haven't done before so there's lots of new beginnings for us right now. Kyle Chamberlain says, absolutely we should design our DNA, not exceeding the limits of what we know, of course. Research first, application later. And a lot of people in the comments took that view. Let's just do the science that we can and worry about the repercussions after. Well, I kind of care about the ethics and there's a lot of ethical questions that I asked in the film that you echoed in the comments. Caesar Ockham says, I'm scared of this becoming very expensive and then the rich are gonna become better than the poor and thus separating the classes more and more. Simon Stuckey said, there's already a crazy imbalance between third world countries and first world countries when it comes to medical care. Is it really the most important thing to make that imbalance greater? And I think the ethical questions that should be asked in that context go much deeper than the ones asked in this video. Aquamonkey EG had a good example. Do you own the rights to your genetic code or do your parents? After all, your parents are the ones who made your code. I love bioethics questions like this, which you would know if you subscribe to Braincraft because I make tons of videos on them. Uh, this is an interesting one that personally, I think that once the genetic codes have been combined to create your own, that's unique. It's yours and you should make decisions on what you want to do with that. In the case of gene editing, it could be interesting if it's a minor who wants to edit their genes, who decides in that case if they should? Is it them or do they need parental consent? A lot of the comments that you have left echo my thoughts as well. I try to be really objective and unbiased in the documentary just because I wanted you to be able to come to your own conclusion about designing your DNA and editing genes and all of the tough questions that I asked you. One of the things though that I really agree with is from Dragon Skunk. I hate the plain god expression. Same. I prefer to use tinkering with nature when I can. I think it's a bit more inclusive and is kind of like a tip of the hat to evolution. I love the quote from the guy at 1025. Science fiction is now becoming science fact. I mean, the things that, that really seemed uh, either unimaginable to the unimaginative uh, is now routine and they forgot that, that, that it used to be unimaginable. Same, it particularly blows my mind every time I listen to it. The fact that science fiction has now become science fact, I love it. John Vincent said, you just love showing off your dog at 2.42. Indeed I do, Mr. Vincent. And you know what? She has an Instagram that you can also follow. It's Luna Labradoodle and she has a little fan club like Mr. Beekeeper. Excellent vid, I enjoyed it. Got to see Luna too, woo. On a more serious note, I was also really touched about how some people opened up in the comments about genetic diseases that you have and what you would do to avoid passing them on to your children. Many people commented things like, I have three different genetic diseases and there's an incredibly high chance my children will have at least one of them. I'd do anything to keep that from happening. I would love not to pass it on to my kids so they can be normal. And again, the sentiment kept popping up that we should just get on with it. I really do not see the downside to this. We have a chance to make humans suck less. The risk is worth it. Trial and error, just get on with it. But there was definitely some balance in what you had to say. If everyone was perfect, the world would become a very, very boring place. We would eventually start finding flaws in other things just to have something to do. And just this point was echoed by my friend Molly in the diner sequences. That would be so boring, wouldn't it? <laughs> 
There was actually a lot of stuff in those diner sequences that didn't make it into the final cut and something that a lot of people kept saying in the diner and actually in the comments on YouTube as well is that they would like longevity, perhaps immortality or even just to live their same quality of life and their same quality of health for many years into the future. Got me thinking about mental resilience, like what happens to our psychology if we're living 10 years longer or 20 years longer or if there are genetically modified people walking around? Like, how do we deal with that psychologically? And is that something that we've considered? Will there be new types of therapies? Will there be new conditions and new treatment for those? More than anything, I'm super, super humbled at a lot of the really lovely comments that you guys left. A lot of them were along these lines. Runes Lou said, I cannot believe that a video that you work so hard on like this only got so little views. It's educational, easy to understand, good editing. Why can't it be trending on YouTube? I'd rather watch this than some idiotic nonsense funny clip. Your move, YouTube. Gustavo Ribeiro asked, the seats at the diner, blue and gold. Perhaps blue and brown. Is it like that dress thing again? Is this how I get on the trending tab? Rusk Reader commented, congratulations, Vanessa, on your long form presentation. Also, and you're gonna hate me for this, try and keep your chin and head up. Like that? And there were lots of comments like this one from Charlie. You should do more half hour episodes. Olga says there should be more documentaries like this on YouTube. Chalk commented, hopefully you'll be able to do more cool long form content like this in the future. And Grant Harper asked, would you be doing any more of this sort of format, Vanessa? Seriously, I would love to. For Meat and Menu, I was fortunate to get some extra funding from Screen Australia and YouTube and PBS Digital Studios. So it kind of depends on what opportunities come my way in the future. But if you think that there's another topic that warrants a 30 minute investigation, please let me know down in the comments. That being said, now that I've built a career, I can do anything. If you've made it this far, I have three quick announcements. And also thank you very much for hanging in there. The first one is that I'm in Ellie Awesome's latest video. It's part of her Show Me Your Food series and you can check it out here. The second is that PBS Digital Studio have a news show now. It's a brand new series called Above the Noise. You can check it out here. There's an episode that I really love on cognitive bias and it's brought to you by PBS Digital Studios but also KQED who produced Deep Look as well. So you know it's gonna be good. The third thing is now Mutant Menu has been released, I have a bit more time to plan my usual episodes and I would love to know what you guys want to see. If you have any questions you've been wondering or any things that you think would be cool on Braincraft, please leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to take some episode suggestions for the weeks, months, years to come. They should make a pig with more fat, not less. Will somebody please think of the bacon? Well me, I'm always thinking of the bacon and pizza.